Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of our trek through the stages of Smash Ultimate. Last time we covered about half the stages, and today we'll be knocking out the last batch. Now if you haven't seen the previous video, I highly suggest you go watch that first, since I do cover some important ground rules for how I'll be judging these stages. However, if you just want to start with part 2 for some reason or need a bit of a refresh, I'll briefly cover them before we begin. There are three main reasons why we ban stages. The first one is hazards, which can cause problems for a competitive because they can often be very volatile or unpredictable. The second is walls and ceilings, which can allow you to live for basically as long as you'd like through teching. Because of this, some stages can drag matches out very long and gives too much of an edge to whoever gets to capitalize on them. Last one is camping potential, which is just the fact that some stages are so big or are shaped in such a way that running away until the time runs out becomes a viable strategy, and there is very little counterplay to challenge it. Those are the main three reasons. Again, I go over this much more in depth in part 1, and there are some minor things I left out. But for the sake of not repeating myself, why don't we just get right into the stages. Green Hill Zone! Starting off strong today with a stage with both steep slants and walk-offs. I guess they're not really slants, it's more of a pit than anything else. With hazards off at least the ground is not destructible, which makes it a little less random. But as you'll see many times today, walk-offs are problematic. 3D Land! Here we have yet another walk-off, except this time it's also an auto-scrawler. Yeah, not the best combination. A big problem with this stage in particular is how there are walls along the ground, which give a very big advantage to whoever gets there first. There are some sections of the stage which are not the worst, like this platform section, but for the most part it's not exactly optimal for a competitive. Golden Plains this is one of those stages that actually has its own mechanic tied to it. If you gather 100 coins, you become gold and have tons of buffs. Which is pretty fun, all things considered, but on hazard list all the coins are gone. So what we're left with is just a very tiny stage with walk-offs and walls. So far we are 3 for 3 on walk-offs, so how many can we get? Paper Mario. Well, here's another one, or at least it's half a walk-off. The right side is a very prime camping position, especially if you have projectiles. There's also this windmill here which rotates if you step on it. Which is pretty interesting because most of the time when hazards are off, they just make these immobile. Aside from that, the left side does have a walk-off, so uh, yeah. Gerudo Valley. Man, we are on a roll with these walk-offs. I really picked the best time to leave off the last video, so we can get all of the walk-off goodness right off the bat. With that said, I'm kind of running out of ways to say that walk-offs are not optimal for a competitive, so let's hope the next one is not a walk-off. Spirit Train. Well, I guess it's not technically a walk-off. However, it still has a lot of the same problems. It has the same moving floor as Big Blue, except it's like twice as fast. If you move in front of the train, you'll get hit by it and launched up. It's not super strong and doesn't really deal a lot of damage, but the main problem with the front of the train is that you can actually stand here, which makes it very difficult to hit you without getting hit by the train. On the back side of the train, the ground drags you directly into the blast zone, and very quickly at that. It also doesn't help that there is no ledge here, which makes it very hard to get back on the train. This stage has a lot of problems, but hey, at least it's not another walk-off. Dreamland GB. Oh, another walk-off. Great. This is yet another one of those moving walk-off stages, which is just lovely. It has a bunch of different layouts that it cycles between randomly. Most of them are walk-offs, and I mean since they are completely random, even if there was one that could be considered legal, it wouldn't really matter. It's also kind of disorientating because the sides of the screen has this Game Boy filters on it, which just makes it hard to make out what is happening. It's another walk-off, what more can I say? You know about Pokemon League. Finally, a stage with actual bottom blast zones. Upon that, it's a pretty good stage to boot. This stage is quite simple, only consisting of two platforms and a flat ground. It is in that aspect fairly similar to Pokemon Stadium, but unlike some stages we talked about last time, it's different enough to not be redundant. The only thing about it that is a little strange is its camera, which can be a little indecisive, but for the most part it works fine. Aside from that, it's just a good stage, and will probably be legal for quite a while. Prism Tower! Prison Tower is another transformation stage. It starts out as a walk-off, but quickly turns into a platform traveling around. It has a lot of different sections, most of which are not the worst things in the world, but do have some problems. It's also problematic that it starts out as a walk-off, but had that simply been the problem, I don't think it would have been that big of a deal. But most of the sections have minor aspects that make them non-optimal for a competitive. Like at one point, the platform is really close to the bottom blast zones. Like, imagine fighting characters like Yoshi here. You'll die at like 50% despite how much you mash. It's not the worst thing ever, but not really suitable for competitive. Mute City SNES. Eh, this stage is a bit of a mess. 
Even with hazards off, the floor still damages you, which is more than enough reason to ban it. But on top of that, there are platforms very close to the blast zones, which can lead to some very cheesy kills. It's not exactly great, but not every stage needs to be. Magic Hand. The layout of this stage is not bad when you first look at it. It's got two platforms with slightly different height. The right one is a little too high for my liking, since it has no ledge and a lot of characters might struggle getting up there. It's also worth mentioning that the ground in this stage is not solid. And for some reason, if you get spiked while you're in the air, you go directly through the floor? Which can lead to some, shall we say, interesting combos? To my knowledge, this is the only stage in the game that has this property. Which is weird to say the least. I don't really know what the deal is. In any case, the real death blow to this stage is the platform under the stage. This platform might be one of the best camping spots in the entire game. Not only do you have free range to shark as much as you'd like, but getting down and trying to hit you can be very risky. The platform does have ledges, but most characters can cover every option because of how small the platform is. This stage might look innocent enough, but let's just say there is more than enough reason why you magic can't play on it. Arena Ferox. This stage seems to have a few predetermined layouts, and it just picks one at random. Some of them are pretty bad having both walls and ceilings, as well as platforms that go very close to the blast zone while some others are fairly simple, only having a few platforms. The one with the platforms could honestly be legal all things considered. I have seen stranger stages be legal. It does have slants, which is not my cup of tea, as you probably know, but slants have not stopped the competitive rule set before, so I doubt it would now. Again, the problem is that it picks one at random, which just makes it very inconsistent, and having to roll a dice every time you want to play on a stage can be very time-consuming, especially in tournaments where time is pretty limited as it is. Reset Bomb Fortress. Yet another stage that looks fine, but is held back by minor problems. Both of the side blast zones are very close to the stage, meaning you can die extremely early from a single mistake while getting back to the stage. Along with that, there are four ledges, which, as I explained last time, is not really a good thing. The platforms are fine for the most part, though the tallest one could cause some problems. It's another stage that is not the worst thing ever, but just not good enough to make the cut. Tortimer Island. Eh, this stage is a little too huge for my liking. I guess it's not technically a walk-off, it's more like a swim-off. Regardless of what you want to call it, water is not exactly the best thing for competitive. At least with hazards off, the trees are not randomly spawned. Okay, so as you can see, there are clearly trees here. But in all of my testing while writing this video, I always got the stage with no trees. Which is uh, just my luck leaving only a flat level to fight on. You know how some Smash players are really scared of a bit of RNG in their game. I mean, after all, Hero did single-handedly ruin competitive Smash forever, so I mean, we can't be having any of that. Balloon Fights. Another one of those looping walk-off stages. Again, my reasoning is mostly the same as last time I talked about it. Seeing how you can pretty much run forever, camping is very easy here. The platforms are also very tall, which makes them really good for characters with tall jumps. You can also just camp on the sides and try to grab for kills at basically any percent, so not great. Living Room. Oh great, more walk-offs, haven't talked enough about those yet. This day has looked very simple, just a flat field with some walk-offs on the sides. Pretty fun for a casual play- wait, what? Oh. Okay, turns out Hazards Off does nothing here. That adds a lot more jank to the stage. Now we have walls, ceilings, and walk-offs. Lovely. I mean, the walk-offs were enough, but I guess the game went for the hard sell here. Either way, it's banned for a reason. Street Pass TM Quest. Good thing Nintendo is being so protective of one of their most valuable IPs. You know, Street Pass Quest. Or Find Me, as it's called in the States. Regardless of what you want to call it, the stage itself is pretty okay. The main problem is the ledge on the right side, which is very difficult to approach if another player is already there. Aside from that, the cage can serve as a ceiling. Granted, it's very small, but I thought I should mention it. Tomodachi Life. This is one of those stages I actually would have considered for competitive had it not been for the top row platform. Had it just been the two platforms under, well, it would probably still be banned but I would have at least given it a fair chance. The top platform as it is is just too close to the top last zone, and having platform layers can also cause some problems. It would be very difficult to get down a layer if there is an opponent under you pressuring you, especially seeing how there is no shield dropping in this game. But it's one of those stages that maybe could have been something. Perhaps in a different life. PictoChat 2! It's pretty much just FD with some microscopic slats on the ledges. Obviously there is nothing wrong with this stage, but it is fairly redundant to keep around when we have FD variants of literally every stage in the game. Mushroom Kingdom U. Not to be confused with Mushroom Kingdom 1, Mushroom Kingdom 2, or Mushroomy Kingdom. Man, give the people who titled these stages a race, they really worked hard when they made these names. 
This is actually another one of those stages that I'm not entirely sure why we didn't at least try playing on. As far as stages go, this one is really not bad at all. It does have uneven platforms and a fairly big blast zone, which is my guess as to why it's banned, but honestly I wouldn't have minded testing out this stage. I like some wildness to the stages, you know, as long as it's not slants. Mario Galaxy. This stage tries to imitate the gravity thing from Mario Galaxy, meaning that you kinda get tilted the closer to the blast zones you get. I don't really know exactly how this affects knockback or angles. Luckily the stage has walk-offs, so I don't really have to care. Whew, really bailed me out there. You know, sometimes walk-offs can be your friend. Mario Circuit. Another transition stage, though this one is a bit more of a volatile one than the last. This one has not only hazards while transitioning, but also some of the transformations have the entire blast zones covered in walls or ceilings. If it was just the starting layout, it would have been a slightly different Smashville. Maybe it would have been legal? Who knows? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised since Yoshi's is still legal. Skyloft! This is yet another one of those stages, I don't really get why we didn't test more extensively. With Hazards Off, it does not transition into the other parts of the stage, only having the platform layout. I guess the reason it was ruled out is because the ground is semi-solid, which can lead to a lot of sharking and generally makes it very hard to recover. But aside from that and, you know, the slants, it's honestly pretty fun to play on. The Great Cave Offensive. Okay, so I guess I'll actually talk about one of these stages for once. I don't think I need to explain why this one is banned. By now you can probably guess why it is so. But honestly, I actually kind of like playing on this stage. It's so wild and wacky that I can't help but like it. Although when I'm playing Smash casually with people, nobody wants to play on it. So this stage is so bad that not even casual players want to play on it. Now that is impressive. Kalos Pokemon League. I don't know what the deal with them making all the Pokemon stages very simple layouts with only a few platforms. But hey, I'm not complaining, it makes for good stages to play on. Kalos Pokemon League is a simple flat selling ground with two platforms on the sides. It also has walls going down the sides of the stage, which makes the curving a little different than it would be otherwise. It's a simple stage, just the way I like it. Colosseum. It's basically just small bridge of Elden. With hazards off, the platforms don't really rise up from the ground, leaving it with a flat stage with walk-offs on the side. Not much more to say, honestly. Flat Zone X. It's another tiny walk-off stage. It has random platforms that are different every time, which is cool, I guess. But it's another walk-off. I don't know why they felt the need to make so many walk-offs in Smash 4. But hey, I guess it's better than adding only four new stages at launch. Palutena's Temple. Again, I would say that this stage is too big, but that's what everyone said about Ridley during Smash 4, and we all know how that went out. Ridley is truly an inspiration to all of us. It really makes you think, and maybe one day we'll actually see the time when Palutena's Temple is legal in competitive Smash. Nah, <laughs> just kidding. Gamer! This map is semi-random every time you play on it, with some of the platforms gone in some games and other times they are there. Obviously a stage that is this random is not really a thing for competitive even if there is a few legal combinations in there. I guess we're just not epic enough to play on this stage. Garden of Hope. With hazards off, all the destructible hazards are removed, and the scales on the sides are stationary as well. However, because of this the bridge in the middle is gone as well, meaning that the stage is split in half with two sections on each side. Which again makes approaching difficult. Aside from that, the stage is also really big, which makes you live for quite a bit longer unless you're fighting really close to the blast zones. Town and City. A classic. It was legal for the entirety of Smash 4, and I don't see why it should be an ultimate as well. The strange thing is that despite hazards being off, the stage still has moving platforms. Which is pretty rare seeing how a stage like Smashville has a stationary platform when they are turned off, but I kinda like this stage with the moving platforms anyway. It made one of the dumbest plays in all my years of playing Smash happen, so I'm very grateful for that. It was, uh, pretty dumb. We Fit Studio! More walk-offs, yay! It's got random platforms, I guess. That's cool. Boxing Ring! The platform on the top of the ring is not destructible when hazards are off, making it a fairly good camping position. And fighting up there so close to the top last zone is not exactly something you want to do. Also, there is walk-offs, so, uh, you know. Garo Plain. Another pretty huge stage. Despite being so big, there is very little actual ground to fight on having a huge gap in the middle with only a few scattered platforms about. The little ground there is are walk-offs, because of course they are. With Hazards Off, Metal Face does not show up, which is honestly kind of sad, because his quotes are really good. I don't know, I just kind of like when he says Minado Boy in a super British accent. Hey, Minado Boy! Like, how can you not like that? Duck Hunt! Duck Hunt is actually a pretty interesting case of a stage that was legal for quite a long time during Smash 4, but was banned after a while. While it was legal, it didn't function fairly well. It wasn't the worst thing ever, but the tree on the left side did cause some problems. It was not surprisingly enough a pretty good camping spot. The reason it was legal was mostly just because of the lack of good alternatives. So when Ultimate rolled around, they just banned it right off the bat. It's not really a bad stage. 
but when we have better alternatives, it's just better to go with those. Wrecking Crew. This stage is kind of weird. It's one of the very few stages that have ladders. 75M had them as well, but I didn't really talk about them. So I guess I'll do that now. You can climb on them. I know, it's really exciting. But a very strange thing that they added to ultimate are ladder attacks, which makes you able to use aerial to while on a ladder. I really can't imagine why they felt a need to add this, seeing how there are only like two stages that actually have them, and they look really weird, you just kinda hover in the air. It's a strange feature to add for sure, and they don't really change anything since it's pretty much always better to be moving while using an aerial. I don't know, Sakurai works in mysterious ways. Either way, the stage itself is random every time, so it's not really optimal. So sadly, the only laddering you'll be able to do is Mario Opers. Pilot Wings! This stage is pretty fun. It has a fairly simple layout, although the main problem is that the plane part in the middle is solid, meaning you can actually camp under the wings and have a wall to your back, which is problematic. The stage also has hazards on the sides of the map as the plane moves, even if they're only there very briefly, so it's not exactly great overall. Woohoo Island! Woohoo Island brings back memories of a brief time in Smash 4 where this stage was actually legal. It was, uh, very wild. In Ultimate, however, we have Hazards Off, which makes the stage way more tame. It has the same problem as Skyloft, being a semi-solid platform, meaning sharking and recovering is kinda suspect here. But aside from that, it could have actually been a fairly good stage. Oh well. Windy Hill Zone! Another stage with the strained Mario Galaxy gravity, which, as I stated earlier, make knockback and angles behave very strangely. Aside from that, the stage is very big and has a lot of long platforms scattered about. There's also a really tall platform on the right side, which makes for a good camping spot. So, uh, not optimal. Wily's Castle. With Hazards Off, this is pretty much just Final Destination with walls down to the blast zones. It's not really used because its inclusion would be pretty redundant, but had we not had Final Destination, it would probably be legal. Packland. This stage might be one of the worst things ever created by humanity. It is such a mess I can't help but like it. It's a side-scroller with walk-offs, so we're already off to a great start. There are tons of walls and obstacles in the way. During this part, you can hardly tell what is even happening. When you reach the end, the stage turns around and you go back to the start. It then starts scrolling really fast and throws cacti, pits, and walls at you and you just kinda die. Now keep in mind that you also have an opponent to fight while this is happening. Let me remind you that you can also play 8 players on this stage, which is probably one of the craziest thing I've seen in a while. Honestly, I think we should legalize this stage along with Great Chaos Offensive and Pirate Ship. Super Mario Maker. Mario Maker is a very strange stage. Unlike some of the stages we have talked about, it's completely random every time. There is some predictability to it, but the different stages can vary wildly. With Hazards Off, it looks like most of the hazards are gone like the lava and ice elements. But there is still a very good chance you'll get a wall or a ceiling at some point. Either way, it's random, so you know. Suzako Castle. This is pretty much camping heaven. It gives you the refined choice of being able to camp on the right side where there is a walk-off, an excellent option, or the left side where there are platforms over a pit really close to the left side last zone. Another fine consideration. Either way, it's not exactly great for competitive, unless you want both players to just stand in their corner and throw projectiles at each other. Midgar. Midgar is Battlefield. That's it. I'd almost be willing to argue that this map should be legal along Battlefield as a shared ban, just for the sake of music variety, but then I remembered that this map only has two tracks, so uh, maybe it's not such a bad thing after all. Umbra Clock Tower. It's Final Destination with severe vertigo and the world's tiniest plant. New Donk City Hall. Finally, we're getting into to the new ultimate stages that were created for the game's launch. You know, all four of them. New Donk is another transition stage. The platform while it's moving is semi-solid, but the different places it lands have much more pressing issues. Like walk-offs. I've said this word so many times today that it's starting to lose its meaning. Thank god we're close to the end here. Great Plateau Tower. It has a massive ceiling which takes up about 50% of the year above the stage, which along with making teching and living forever really easy, it also just limits how much you can move around. Aside from that, it's a fairly balanced stage, but the ceiling is a bit too much. Moray Towers. This stage has some weird properties where if you run onto these platforms, you always go down, even though it looks like you're going to run up. I'm really running out of things to say about these stages, man. It kinda has the same problem as Tomodachi Life from earlier being just too much stage horizontally. It's also, like, exclusively made of slants, so you'll probably know how I feel about stage overall. 
And finally, Dracula's Castle. For some reason, this stage has a filter over the camera, which kind of darkens the side of the screens a bit. It's not really enough to obstruct any action, but they really wanted to set the mood, I guess. It really bothers me how close this stage is to being legal, but just loses up because of a few minor factors. Had it not been for the walls and the stair on the right, it might actually have been considered, and we could have had Castlevania music in tournaments, but alas. It was not meant to be. But that is going to do it, I think. I've now gone through every single stage in the base game of Smash Ultimate. Now, as for DLC stages, seeing how there are six more stages to be added in later DLC, I will think I'll dedicate a separate video to those when they are all out. Seeing how it would be a little incomplete to cover just a few that are out now, and then make a separate video on just the remaining later. However, I hope you enjoyed this journey through all of Ultimate stages. And hopefully it cleared some things out for those who were curious. In any case, let me know how much you probably disagree with me in the comments, and I'll make sure to maybe read it. In any case, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.